Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So glad that you stopped by to watch another video. If this is the first uh, time you're seeing any of my content here on YouTube, hey, what's up? My name's Sam, how's it going? So glad that you stopped by to watch one of my videos. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about different tools and brushes that you can use to apply your makeup. So this came as a special request from one of my subscribers. So thank you so much for suggesting this video. I think it's a great topic. Um, before we dive into the video, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Would love to have you here as a subby. And then also don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful. All right, so um, basically, like I said, what this video is about is about different beauty tools and different um, things that you can use to apply makeup on your face. So I thought what would make the most sense is to talk about the products in the order that you would put um, them on your face, um, the products on your face. Now, just for today's video, I'm just talking about face products. I will do a separate video on eye brushes because I just feel like that's a whole other animal. And I don't want this video to be too long because I feel like just talking about face brushes enough will be enough for this video. So uh, stay tuned for part two and um, we'll talk about eye brushes in part two. So anyway, so let's go ahead and talk about here. I'm gonna close my computer screen here. I was using it for something earlier. So let's go ahead and talk about foundation. So foundation, after you have primed and used your makeup and like your skincare and all of that, foundation should be your very first step. So there's different things that you can use for foundation. I'm actually grabbing them here. So there's a couple of options you can use for foundation. What you can do is you can use a beauty sponge. So this is just the original beauty blender. Um, you don't have to invest in a beauty blender per se. There's other brands that offer beauty sponges, like e.l.f. has a really good one. Morphe, um, pretty much everybody and their mother has a beauty sponge if they're selling beauty products, I feel like. So I just personally like the beauty blender. I feel like it works the best. However, to each their own, you can kind of explore and figure out what, what works best for you. And then another thing is you can use a brush. So there's different types of brushes that you can use for foundation. The first thing is an actual foundation brush, uh, paddle brush. And this is what this one looks like. I apologize, it's dirty. I didn't have enough time to wash it before this video. I actually used it this morning to put on my foundation. But what you would do, um, this is really good for like light to medium coverage foundations. Um, so foundations that are not too thick, um, that require a lot of blending. So what I like to use particularly for this brush is when I'm using like a lighter coverage foundation or a concealer. And what I'll do is I'll put the product on my skin and then I'll blend it in kind of using like swiping windshield wiper type of motions, kind of like this to really blend it into the skin. What's nice about using a brush like this is you really can get in certain areas and just kind of blend it out beautifully. Another type of paddle brush is this one. This is more of like a fluffier one. Um, so you can use that to blend in your foundation using the same type of motion. You can also use a stippling brush. And as you can see, it kind of has like these fibers here. So using a stippling brush, you're going to use a different technique. So what you would do is you would put the product on your face and then you would just kind of stipple. So as you can see, I'm just kind of like stippling and then you would buff. And that's kind of how you get it worked into the skin. This is a larger, what they call foundation brush, but it has kind of like that stipple shape where it has those dual fibers. And again, you would get it on your face and then you would stipple and then blend it into the skin. Another brush you can use um, if you're talking about foundations is a kabuki brush. I'll insert a clip here of what a kabuki brush looks like because I do not own one. But kabuki brushes are really good for powder foundations. So if you do not use liquid or cream foundations, then kabuki brushes are better for powder foundations. And that way you can just get the product in there and then swirl it and then like do buffing motion. So you're buffing it into the skin. What I will say for any of these techniques or any of these products, you want to be very gentle on the skin. Your, the skin on your face in particular is very um, delicate and sensitive. So you don't want to be, you know, um, being too, you know, harsh on your skin. You definitely want to be as gentle as possible. So those are just some options for blending in and applying your foundation. So those are just some techniques there with that. So after you've done the foundation, then most people go in and use their concealer. And there are a couple of concealer brushes. 
Um, the one that I use for the, the majority of the time is this one from Morphe and it's an M173. And the reason I like it is because it has like this dome aspect of it. So you can really just get in there and apply the product and then blend it out just kind of using like gentle circular motions. Another tool that you can use once again is a beauty blender or a beauty sponge because a lot of them will have this pointed tip. You can really get in there underneath your eye and around your nose and wherever you're concealing to really blend it out. So that's really just a personal preference. You can use either a sponge or a brush. I find both to be effective. It just depends on the day and how much of a hurry that you're in to be perfectly honest. I feel like because the beauty blender is such a multiversal tool, a lot of times I'll just use it for both versus having to use a sponge and a brush. But you do you. I don't think either one would be a problem. And I feel like they both would give you the same level of coverage um, in terms of, you know, blending out the foundation. So once you've done your foundation and then your concealer, the other thing then what you would do is you would powder your face if you are a powder person. Um, so you would use an all over face powder. So there are some really good powder brushes that I'll share with you here. Um, so there's, they don't come in necessarily one standard size, if that makes sense. Powder brushes come in very, various shapes and various sizes. I would say for the most part, when we're speaking in generality terms, there's going to be a, a brush that's going to have like what we call a face brush, where it's going to have a larger um, size of the bristles and it's going to cover a larger portions of your face and then there's going to be like a medium sized uh, powder brush where it's going to be give you the ability to kind of be a little bit more precise about where you want to powder and then there's going to be like a smaller one so I will show you some visuals here right now but think of it just in like small medium large okay so when we're working our way let's just do large to small so these are what I would consider your large face powder brushes this one's from eco tools and this kind of has like a more pointed tip to it which I don't think is right or wrong I think it just depends on your preference and then this one's from Moda Beauty I think that's the right name and as you can see that has a different shape but as you can see both cover large portions of your face so if you are wanting to powder the majority of your face these are really great brushes to get that handle if you want to be a little bit more precise and you want to powder just maybe certain sections of your face then these are good brushes for that and I'm getting ready to pull them up here now this one's just like a middle of the road type of brush and then you can be a little bit more precise about where you're powdering and then this one's also a good one this is kind of a small to medium and again you can be more precise about the powder all of these brushes that i'm talking about here for the most part um, are good on um like loose or pressed powders okay so you can certainly do that and just make sure that it's it's in the area there. And then in terms of a small powder brush, I'm trying to find one here for you guys so you can see. This one would be really particularly good for like the under eye area. And this is called a setting brush. So this one you can be really precise. So if you just wanna, you know, get right under your eye area, that's really gonna be helpful, right? Because a large uh, powder brush is not gonna be able to really fit in there very effectively. So this is really great. So those are just the different types of powder brushes you can invest in. Um, my recommendation would be, I think someone, I think anyone that's, you know, getting into the world of makeup and you're trying to build up your collection, I think you should have at least one large face powder brush, one medium sized one and one small one. Um, you don't have to have multiples here, but if you have one of each, I think that gives you enough versatility to get the job done depending on where you want to powder and just gives you options. Okay, so now I've talked about foundation concealer, powder. Now let's talk about contour. So with contour, there is going to be a special type of brush that you're going to need to contour and it's called a contour brush. Shocking. So this one is a called, actually, this is not a contour brush. I apologize. This is the one I wanted to pick up. So as you can see, it has like just a small dome to it. And the idea with a contour brush is you should be able to get into those hollows of those areas that you want to contour, right? So it's good for like the forehead, it's good for like on the sides of your nose. So this is just a very versatile brush. I would say if you're a beginner to contouring, start off with a brush like this because it really just allows you to um, start small and you're not covering a huge large portion of your face. So if you don't get the contour right, then you could easily blend it out and you're not dealing with as much product. 
If you're um, not a newbie to contouring, then one product that I think would be good for you is this one. And this is from Real Techniques. And as you can see, it's way larger than this guy. So you definitely cover a lot more surface area with this one. You still get the same idea where you get in there and contour, but you just have a lot more product that you're dealing with. So if you're very familiar with contouring, you're not scared of it, you know, you're very um, precise about it and you know what you're doing, then you can certainly upgrade to a brush like this. But again, I would not recommend this for beginners. I would recommend the brush that I just showed you before. That's really gonna help you understand the contours and things of that nature. Both of those brushes are good for cream and powder products because contouring products do come in both of those type of finishes. So I think they would be good for either ones. Um, so it's really, really important to know. So now let's talk about bronzer. So bronzer, um, it's gonna be a larger brush, but it's not gonna be as large as a face brush. Now I know some people will use a face brush to bronze and I don't think that's necessarily wrong. Um, but I just, I wouldn't use something that large to cover your face because I like to be a little bit more precise with my bronzer. I don't like to just put it all over the face. So you do you, you do what you want to do. But for bronzing me personally, I use something that's a little bit smaller than a face brush. And so what I will use is I will use something like, like this. So I've got something like this where it is a larger brush, but it's not as large as a face brush. Or you could use something like this that's a little bit more pointed. And then that way you can just really get in there and bronze. It's still large enough, but it's a little bit more precise, okay? I don't know if there's any companies that make things specifically just for bronzing. Like I said, most of the time people will just use either a blush brush or like a face powder brush. You do you, you kind of experiment, but I like to kind of go in between like a blush brush and a face powder brush. And so I just kind of find something that's kind of in, in the in-between sizes there. Speaking of blush, there are brushes specifically for blush. So I'm gonna grab a few here that I particularly like for blush, just so you guys can get a little context here. So there's different shapes. So the first type of shape of a, a blush brush is like the angled one, but you certainly don't want your blush brush to be large like a bronzer, bronzer brush, excuse me, or a face brush, because the idea is you want your blush just to be right on your cheek. So you don't want it covering like the whole surface area, especially since you've already contoured, got your bronzer, and now you got your cheek, your um, blush on. So you definitely just want a brush that's small enough to get into just your cheek area, okay? And that the reason I like angled ones is that they really just kind of help control that and help you stay in the area that you need to be in. Another shape for a blush brush is like this tulip shape like I talked about. This one could also be good for bronzer too if you really wanted to, but I particularly like to use this for blush. And then there's just the standard kind of, I don't even know what you would call this shape, but as you can see, it's just nice and fluffy, distributes the product well, and then you've got something a little bit smaller. This is a real technique ones too. And again, just something that's gonna stay small enough to stay on your cheek area. So those are blush brushes. And then let's talk about highlighter. So there are a few different types of highlighting brushes. I'm just grabbing some now. Well, I don't want to say there's different types. There's really only two, there's only a couple of types that I would consider um, highlighting brushes. And so I'll show them to you. So the most popular type of highlighting brush is what we call a fan brush. And they come in all different shapes and sizes, as you can see. So this one's a pretty large fan brush. This is a smaller one, and this is like a medium sized one. And the idea with highlighter is that you only wanna have it sit like on top of your cheekbone. So what most people do is they'll highlight the top of their cheekbone, they'll highlight the lip area, they'll highlight their forehead, down the bridge of their nose, sometimes on their chin, and sometimes underneath their eyebrow. And so what's nice about having the fan is it can just kind of hit those areas really nicely. As you can see. So that's why I prefer the fan shape. Another shape that's popular is this. It's kind of like this really blown out tulip shape. This is from Moda. And I believe this is their highlighting brush. And so what people would do is just kind of get the highlighter like right on like kind of one of the edges and they just stay right on top of their cheek. And then wherever else they want to highlight. Another type of brush that's helpful is this kind of brush where it's a little bit on the smaller side and then you can really just kind of concentrate, you know, the highlighter. So I would say if you're a newbie, then 
you know, just try out a fan brush. It's really going to be helpful and it's just really going to help distribute the product. So that's highlighter. Um, and then I think that's everything. So we've talked about foundations. We've talked about powder. We've talked about concealer. We've talked about, yeah, I think we've talked about everything. So I think what's important to now talk about now that we've talked about brushes is talking about taking care of your brushes. Cause that's very important. You want to take care of your investment that you've spent in brushes. Now I'm not saying you need to go out and spend hundreds upon hundreds of dollars in brushes. If you watched my Save Money Honey video, then I talk about different brands that are affordable in terms of the brush category, so I'm not gonna go into that. But you certainly still want to take care of your brushes. So there's two different types of ways you can keep your brushes clean. The first thing is what we would consider like a daily cleaner where it just has enough like uh, conceal, not concealer, it has enough um, solution in there to just get the residual from the day. So if you, you know, just did a quick makeup look, then you can just get the spray, you just spray it on a paper towel, and then you just kind of run your brush through it. And then it just kind of gets the color out, but it doesn't deep clean your brushes. So then the other thing, even if you are going to be touching up your brushes, you still need to do a deep dive clean of them just to make sure that all the product is getting out of there. So my recommendation is that you clean your brushes at least once a week, once every other week, just depending on how often you use makeup. I would say if you're a daily makeup user like myself, then you definitely need to deep clean your brushes once a week, um, you know, especially the brushes that you use continually throughout the week. So what I do, and take it for what it's worth, but I will select out the brushes a week ahead of what I need to make a, a basic makeup look. And if I know I'm going out or if I need an extra type of brush or product, um, I will kind of lay all that stuff out and I'll use the same ones every single day. Um, so that way I'm not using five blush brushes, five powder brushes, five foundation brushes or five sponges, right? So if I know, okay, I'm picking this beauty blender, I'm gonna use it for the whole entire week. And then at the end of the week, I'm gonna clean it and then I'll use a different beauty blender. That's my strategy, just so I'm not dirtying up extra brushes. If you don't have as many brushes as I do and you only have a select few, then I would definitely then emphasize the need to keep cleaning your brushes because the more dirt and the more makeup that's getting in there and it's getting put on your clean skin every day, it could be problematic. It could cause you to break out. It could cause skin issues. So you certainly want your tools to be as clean as possible. The type of cleanser that I use is from Beauty Blender. In fact, let me grab it. Okay, as I was saying, um, I use a cleanser from Beauty Blender. So it's called their B Blender Cleanser Solid. And this is what it looks like. And what's nice about it is that it will come with a scrubber. So this is safe for beauty sponges and brushes. And the idea is you would just get it and kind of clean it there, okay? So what's nice about this one is that it does last you for a really long time. A little goes a long way. I believe this size is the $9 size. So this is not the full size. They have a bigger one that's $16, but this is the $9 one and it's gonna last me a really, really long time. And then I also have this one. It's the Beauty Blender Solid Pro. It's just like their black soap. I got it as a sample when I bought one of my beauty blenders way back in the day. So that's the cleanser that I would recommend you guys get. Not necessarily that one, but just one that's designed to clean beauty sponges and beauty brushes because it's really going to get in there and clean the product. I know some people will just use like regular dish soap or they will use the soap forget what it's called, but um, it's kind of like a knockoff version of like a beauty blender soap. Um, that works too, but I think what's nice about this type of, of a soap is that it does have conditioning properties for your sponge and for your brush, and so it's going to help the longevity of them and it's gonna help condition them. So it just really depends, it's up to you. I think it's worth the money to invest in something like this, but if you're on a budget and you're just like, heck, I just don't want to spend nine, sixteen dollars on a brush and I've got like a ton of dish soap in my house, go for it. It will do the same thing. Um, I just want to invest in my brushes a little bit more and just help them last a little bit longer. But you do you, no judgment if you don't want to spend that kind of money. So in the next clip I want to show you guys just kind of walks you through like how to wash your brushes. Let's go ahead and jump into the clip where I show you guys how to clean your brushes and I'll see you back here for more. All right, so these are the brushes that I have to clean today. 
including a sponge right over here. So I'm gonna walk you guys through how you would do that. What you need is you'll just need to lay out your brushes here. And then what you're gonna need is you're just gonna need some soap. And I have this Beauty Blender Solid Soap. And all you're gonna do is just you're just gonna wet the brush and then lather the soap and then rinse it out. All right, so then this clip you are seeing me clean the sponge. And so what I'm doing is I'm getting the soap really worked into the sponge and then I am working it through the sponge. And the goal that I wanna have with the sponge is I wanna make sure all the makeup is removed from the sponge. And then once I see the water clear and there's no more product coming out, then I know the sponge is clean and I wring it dry. And I do the same thing with the brush. So I really get the soap into the brush and I work it into the brush as you can see there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of wash it out on my hand and again, the same idea is that I am just working that soap through the brush and making sure all the makeup is getting removed from the brush. You'll know that the brush is clean again once it, all the product has been removed and it's like clear water that's coming out. So you wanna do that for the rest of your brushes. And again, it's the same idea. So in this next set of clips, you're just gonna see me clean the rest of my brushes. Once the brushes have been washed, you want to reshape them while they're still wet because you want them to dry in the original shape and the intended shape that they have. If you try to do that when it's dry, it's really difficult. So it's really important once you've wrung out all the water that you reshape the brush to its original form. That way it can dry properly. And then you just wanna lay it flat. So I like to lay my brushes with like brushes. So face brushes with face brushes, eye brushes with eye brushes, etc. You don't have to do it that way, but you certainly can. And then wait until they are fully dry to put them back in your drawer. It could take anywhere from six to 24 hours for them to fully dry. Okay, well, I hope you found that clip of washing your brushes really helpful. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I know it's kind of a lengthy video, but um, again, it was special requested. And so I hope it, it helped answer any of the questions that um, is lingering out there when it comes to brushes. Again, there will be a part two. I will do an eye uh, makeup, not eye makeup. There is going to be a part two where I do talk about eye brushes. So stay tuned for that. I will upload that in the near future. Um, so again, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.